Father God, may we leave our perceptions, Abba Father God, and what we think, may we leave it behind, Yahweh Elohim. Because you are the great I am, Abba Father God. Abba, in so viel keer sê in die woord, your thoughts are not my thoughts, Andre. And as Andre, I say nie. All die beloftes in die drome kom taal wat ek oor jou het, is dit meer as jou sam kom nie, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father God. Thank you, Yahweh Elim, for your presence, Abba Father God. Yere, thank you for still like a worship, Abba. Where we can just erupt in joy, Abba Father God. Thank you, Abba Father God. For your love and your peace that fills us right now. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba Father God. Thank you, Yahweh Elim, for your presence, Abba Father God. May we not leave your presence unchanged. Thank you, Yahweh. We praise you and we honor you, Abba. Toil the grounds of our hearts for this word, Abba. That you, God, and today, if you need to remove our shoes and put on, put on new shoes, Abba, Father God, do that for the road that is to come. Thank you, Abba, Father God. Thank you, Yahweh, Him. I pray that in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, Father God. Amen. Yo, yeah. What's your name? Are you English? What's your name? Dylan. I just want to tell you, Dylan, while I was worshiping, because when I walked in this morning, God immediately showed me you. And I just want to give you this prophetic word that I wrote on my heart this morning. As I worshiped, God said, you are Gideon. Do you know the story of Gideon? So Gideon was called as a mighty man of valor, but Gideon never thought he was good enough. So he actually started hiding away for the enemy. And then an angel appeared to Gideon and said, Gideon, why are you hiding? And I experienced in my spirit that the Lord said, it's t- time to stop hiding, Dylan. Because so many times I know God showed me, you've got a lot of influence in people. People listen to you as a leader. You've got a lot of friends. And so many times you've asked Abba, Father, I see you. It's like you're walking in a hallway and you're trying to open doors. And every door you open is the wrong door. And in your heart, you kept on saying, but no, I'm not good enough for this. And the enemy kept on telling you, no, you are too sinful. You are too this and you are too that. And today I want to declare over you in the mighty name of Yeshua, you will live your purpose. You will be a Gideon that arises because you know what Gideon won the enemy with? A shofar. And like a pottery, like a, a, a water, that's a crack, help me, so a water jar. That's what he won the enemy with, with light. And I really experienced that our Father says that he will give you the minimum and you will turn it around for victory, says the Lord. Amen. You have a very strong prophetic gift in your life. And the enemy is trying to steal that as well. Because God showed me how the world is trying to take you back and take you back. You've got a very, very big anointing in your life, Dylan. And today is a good day for change. And I know sometimes you walked in, you thought, I can't do this. You can. Because you are worthy. I need you to hear this. God says, the one that created you says you are worthy. And he thinks the world of you. It's time to rise up, mighty man of valor. It's time to rise up. It's your turn. Amen. Amen. Hey. Ek kan my volume uitdraai. En dan gaan ek nie vir hulle skreeu nie. Wat sê? Amper. Let me do this. Then it's easier. <laughs> Child of God, have you ever felt that you're just breathing? Have you ever felt that every day you have this normal routine? You get up in the morning. You feed the animals. And by this I mean little human kids and dogs, furry, furry kids. You feed them in the morning, you get ready for work, you pack their lunches. Maybe you drive them to a job that, that let's be honest, you don't really like. But maybe you're just good at it. You're really good at accounting or you're really good at doing this or that or whatever. And you drive to this job that you think in your heart, oh, 
going to wait till five o'clock so I can go home. Right? Have you ever thought that maybe you've outgrown your grown-up job? Maybe you sit and stare at your laptop sometimes or at your computer screen and you think to yourself, Abba, why am I doing this again? Why am I here? Or maybe you've asked Abba Father out of frustration because you feel like you're stuck in a rut, that you've asked Abba Father, Abba Father, is this it? Is this as good as it gets? Is this what I need to be doing? Abba, did I miss something? Should I perhaps have taken a left turn instead of a right? Abba Father, is this the dream that you have for me? Is this it? Have you ever felt like that, child of God? Then you read this verse, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and we all quote it so many times. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And sometimes when you're in that rut and you don't feel so great, people would send you this verse and you would think, yeah, oh, yeah, Because at that moment, you're in such a rut, you just feel like, you know what, whatever, I just get up tomorrow morning, nothing's going to change, I'm just going to get up, it's going to be the same old, same old, right? When we look at this verse, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and we actually look at the Hebrew, I'm just going to take a few words because I just want to show you what Abba Father is actually saying to you today. When you look at the word for thoughts, it says the Lord, thoughts of peace. These thoughts is the Hebrew picture. It's an intention or a plan. It means something that's been invented it means a purpose. But then you look at its root of that Hebrew word. It says to calculate. Very specifically to calculate. It means to think a plan. It means to value. To value. It means to regard. It means to regard. It means to be accounted. Ever felt like God forgot you? Ever felt like God doesn't really see what's going on? His thoughts, he, you're counted. He knows the hair on your head. To be mindful of. Can you see that even in these thoughts that Abba Father has, that everything is perfectly calculated in purpose? Can you see, child of God, that he values you? I don't know why, and I just feel it in my heart. I need to say this again and again. Child of God, he values you. That's why he died on the cross of Calvary. Did you hear that? The cross was for you. His blood shed was for you. He values you, even if the world is throwing you away. God says today, I value you, child of God. He is mindful of you. Have you ever felt that sometimes, even in relationships, friendships, or um, covenants, sometimes you would feel your partner, your best friend, is not actually valuing you, number one, or two, they're not mindful of you. And then sometimes these massive fights erupt with the words, but you think that it's going Sound familiar? What did you think was going to happen if you do this? Did you not think it would affect me? This is the wonderful thing about Yahweh Elohim. He's mindful of you. He's mindful of you sitting here today. This picture is saying and painting this picture just of thoughts, guys. Just of the word, the Hebrew word thoughts that he has towards you. It's like our father is saying, Zandri, before you were born, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, 
Before you were born, I knew your circumstances and your cha challenges, my child. Every detail I still know today is under you. Every step of your life was fearfully calculated, my child. And it still is. Every single step is calculated by the master creator himself, Yahweh Elohim. Of your life, not just of mine, of your life sitting here today. Can I get an amen because that's really cool? Amen in our lives. I know you kind of don't know maybe where you're going. And you kind of don't have it all figured out. I don't have it all figured out. Really, I don't. <laughs> but I have faith. And I get the in my heart that I know that the one who created me has, all, has it all figured out. Praise the Lord. And I just need to listen. I just need to listen. And I just need to be in relationship with him. Because that's what, what was the cross for, right? To tear that veil so I can be in relationship with him. So his spirit can lead me. The word of God says, when you walk down a road, you will hear a voice behind you say, go left or go right. That's him leading us. Can you see that God desperately wants to speak to you? He wants to build relationship with you because he loves you. He values you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Remember we said that thoughts of peace. Listen to what peace means. Peace is the Hebrew word we all know very well. Shalom. Okay. So shalom has loads of meanings. But in this context, listen to what it means. It means to be safe. Yes, to be safe in South Africa. He has thoughts, a plan towards you so you can be safe. To be happy. To be happy. Thank you. Guys, so many times our happiness depends on our circumstances, right? I'm talking about myself, especially as girls. You can get overly emotional. Guys, don't say anything. Many a wife nudge me. Our happiness depends on our circumstances, and our Father's word says, no, the happiness depends on the purpose that he has for you in heaven. Listen how cool this is. This peace means 100% health. Hallelujah, I'll take that. Amen, I'm going to take that. No more asthma medication. No more blood pressure medication. I know someone is on blood pressure here. Just made it to my now off. How cool would that be? But see, the thing is, it's in there and I can just take the promise, right? 100% health. This is part of this peace that he has. Prosperity, favor. Favor. He has this peace. It means to be whole. Oh, hallelujah. No more issues. No more being afraid of heights. That'll be awesome. I know it sounds stupid, but it's still part of issues. You're going to be whole. Guys, this is the thought. This is the plan and the purpose that Yahweh Elohim has for you. How many of these boxes did you tick? How many boxes did you tick? But listen to this. So shalom has this root word. So how it works in Hebrew. Sorry for the new people. You have a word, and Hebrew is an action. It's an action word. And Hebrew, typically, it's, don't tell me you love me, show me. Hebrew loves actions, okay? It's all about the picture. So a root word is literally this action behind the piece. So the root of shalom is shalom. It means it takes safe to a deeper level. Listen to what it says. To be safe in mind, body, and estate. Mind, body, 
and escape to be safe. It means to be completed. And by implication, listen to this, and this will make so much sense. By implication, you will be friendly when you are completed. Makes sense, right? Because sometimes people look at me and say, yeah, yeah, just love the love. I'm going to go begin for you. And I'll scoot down there, I'm going to be sick. But you're not really friendly, right? Because my circumstances outside depends on my happiness inside, right? This is not what Yahweh Elohim says. He says, because you are completed and whole in me, in my plan and in my purpose, you will be friendly. <laughs> it means to restore, to reward, and to recompense. Child of God, for everything that you've gone through, through persecution, through whatever you've gone through, the plan and the purpose, uh, purpose is that God will reward, restore, and recompense you for that. So says the Lord. These are two words in Hebrew, guys, in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. This plan Yahweh has for you, did you hear it means to be safe, to be perfect in health, to be prosperous, to rest is one of them. To be whole, to feel completed, to be friendly, to be restored, to be rewarded, to be recompensed, to be paid back for everything that you've gone through. So, child of God, if we need to do a quick stop take, honestly, please don't put up your hands, though. Honestly, in your heart, just between you and our Father, where no one sees and where no one knows, do you really feel like this? Honestly. Do you really honestly feel like this? Do you feel like this amazing plan and purpose that we just read about, do you feel that in your life? Do you really feel like this? Because something that our father asked me is, Andre, how many of my children is living the dream that Yahweh has? How many of us is really living the dream that Abba Father has for us? I want to ask you, are you living the shalom that Abba has for you? And it's for each one of us. Are we living that? Between you and Abba Father. You need to do stock take on the inside. Whose dream are you living? Just a thought. Use it, don't use it. Whose dream are you living? Because when you look at the rest of the verse, it means it says at the end, I have this expected end. I love this word. Expected in Hebrew is the word tikva. I love this word. So, tikva is literally a cord as an attachment, okay? Tikva is also, it means hope, to bring hope. It means something that you long for, and it also means an expectancy. But tikva has a root, which is kwava. Kwava means bind together. It means gathered together. It also means... Patiently, to patiently wait for. This is what tikva means. Tikva was also used when Rahab's red cord was hung from a window. That cord that was hung was called, in Hebrew, it's tikva. This cord as an attachment is so many times in the word of Abba Father described as an umbilical cord between a mother and a baby. So this umbilical cord only lets through the best for the baby so that the baby can be nourished. Everything that it needs for growth and for nourishment, this tikva lets through. Then you get that expected, what was tikva, and then end. This end, in Hebrew it means the future. It means a remnant. 
for those that stay behind. It means a reward. But this time has this root in Hebrew, and the root word for expected end is achar. I need you to remember this word, achar. Achar means afterwards, of time. But the funny thing is about this word in Hebrew, it has another root if you even dig deeper. But something else which I saw as I dug deeper into this word, achar, it's kind of like a dead end to dreams. A total dead end. The root of achar, when you dive even deeper, listen to this. It means to loiter. It means to procrastinate. By implication, to procrastinate. Jou gaan dit nou nou doen. Ek sal dit oormorgen doen. It means to defer, to delay, to hinder, to be late because you are slack, to tarry longer uh, as what you are supposed to. Aha. But listen to this, because this is really interesting. This word, achar, this defer, appears 16 times in the word of our Father. So everything that we've learned just now, listen to this, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 3 to 5. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, Defer not to pay it. Achar. Don't procrastinate. Don't hinder it. Don't delay it. Don't tarry longer. Don't defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is thou should not vow, that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Our Father, I promise I will do this and this and this if I can only get that promotion at work. God, if I had more money, Lord, then I can do so many things for the church, Lord. So this promotion, Abba Father God, is going to help me so much. And then, God, if I can just get this promotion, you're going to see, Abba Father, you'll see me. These hours are going to go open, so then I can go work at the church more, ne? I can help them with feasts. I can become part of the sound crew. I can do all these things, Abba Father God. If I can just get this promotion, God, I promise you, I will then do this and this and this and this. And then you get the promotion. And then... And then the church group, the church office posts something in our live stream groups, which by the way, I want to tell you today that our live stream groups, more or less across five groups, we have 2,000 participants. 2,000 participants. And we have the same 15 people that can help every year when preparing for the feasts. 15. I count them. I'm safe. Why is that, Bride of Christ? We have, out of 2,000 people, we have two people that stand up and put up their hand for the sound crew. And there's one of them today that says, you know what? I asked Abba Father, he made me Abba, which means God sent me. And he came for training, Lord. One percent of these people reported for duty to help out at our children's ministry. One percent. Yo, but Zandri, you must understand now, ne? Those are not my strong birds. I can't work with children. Those are not my strong birds. I understand that. 
I totally understand that. But I want you to come and talk to me and tell me what are your strong points because I promise you we have more or less about 10 or 12 ministries in this church where you can serve in the body of Christ, taking out the word. Sometimes we are char, children of God, bride of Christ. Sometimes we are char, let's be honest. Because it's ehrlich. This is what we do, right? We are char. Sometimes we are char, defer, delay, procrastinate against, but yeah, Zanji, but if you only knew my diary, I don't have time. And you are probably 100% right. We don't have time because Yeshua is on his way. We're in a little bit of a timer here, guys. <laughs> Look at the timer. Yeshua is on his way. We have no time. So now is a good a time of any to start today. I want to ask you, child of God, because as I prepared for this, I felt our Father, my heart say, Zandri, tell my bride, what are they waiting for? And I have this fire inside of me. It feels like I want to jump around and say, guys, it's coming. I'm pretty everywhere. <laughs> no, frag mok. What are we waiting for, honestly, in your heart? What are you waiting for so you can stand up? So you can make a difference. And maybe you are making a difference, and I don't know about that. I don't know, but then this is not applicable to you because the Word of God says, Toets alles en bou die goeie. Toets dit in jou eie leven. But I'm asking you, child of God, what are we waiting for? From a sign from heaven. Yet it is today. It's time. Stand up. Listen to Psalm 20, 27, 127, sorry. 127, verse 2. This is David, a man after God's own heart. Listen to this. It is vain for you to rise up early and sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrows. This bread of sorrows in Hebrew is the word an earthen vessel. So it's a vessel that's busy laboring, toiling. Oh, I have to pay this this month and I can't pay. Okay, then I have to pay this as well and I have to do this work. Oh, I need to do this and this before tomorrow morning. Wait, let me rather not sleep. Let me rather sit up late. And then the end of this Hebrew word is that it becomes an idol eventually. This is the Hebrew word for the bread of sorrows that you will eat. And you need to understand me, child of God, please. I'm not saying we all go tomorrow and quit our jobs. No, this is not what I'm saying. Something that God has showed me is that all that I'm saying is that I've experienced that so many times we are so busy with our jobs that we miss our purpose because there's a difference. There's a very big difference. My body is dust. So is yours. I will die when it's my time. And then, then someone else will take my place and do my job because if the man goes on the ground, the message needs to go on. Then someone else will do my job. Listen carefully, my job. Someone else will type letters. Someone else will run errands. And then, and then I stand before Yahweh Elohim. And when I stand before Yahweh Elohim, bride of Christ, what about my purpose? Because I was so busy typing letters and running errands that I started thinking that that was my purpose. How much of the dream or purpose that our Father had for you and fashioned into you fearfully and wonderfully are you living? Last Sunday... I was speaking to a, a friend of mine, and also a med facilitator, and she started sharing this testimony with me. And at first, as she told me this testimony, my head was running at 100 kilometers at an hour, and I thought, Abba, can this be real? 
because it made me think immediately about my life. And my mentor taught me, which is for Chai Beste, he taught me that before I stand on a stage behind this pulpit and preach it, I need to look in the mirror and first inspect my own heart regarding the subject that you are preaching about. Otherwise, you'll just be a hypocrite, right? I need to look in the mirror and say, Abba Father, where am I on this line? Before I stand here and preach it. I have to wash myself with the word of Abba Father. I have to look in the mirror and say, look in the mirror and say, Zanri, are you okay with this? You're going to tell these people that they have to do this, but where are you? So before I tell you this testimony, I just want to read something to you, a part of scripture we all know and we so many a times we quote. Listen to this. At Psalm 139, verse 14 to 16. You know this. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Verse 16, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Verse 17, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. So something that's really, really interesting and that caught my eye immediately about these verses, for those of you that don't know, and maybe you have that eSword app on your phone and you'll see, when you open it on that verse, you will see on any Bible app as well, you have these words that are gray and it also looks like they're like printed in this cursive font, right? Have you seen that? They're grayed out and they're printed in this cursive font. So why do they do it this way? So it's that you can see these words or these terms that stipulated in that way means that they were not part of the original scrolls. These words or terms were not in the Masoretic text. It wasn't there. It wasn't part of the original Hebrew text. These are words or terms that was added because really smart people thought it would make more sense to you when you read it like that. So they added it in so it would make more sense. Well, that's according to them. They thought it would be a good idea. So one of these examples is verse 16, this very part, that says, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. So the words, my members, were added in. It was never there. Why am I saying this? Wait, it's going to make sense now. Okay. So in this Psalm 139, when you open it on your app, you'll see there's a lot of words that's been added in, but we're looking at verse 16, which says, if you take it out, it would say, thine eyes did not see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all were written. All were written. So the Hebrew word for all is kol, sounds the same, right? And all means all. It means whatsoever, whosoever, whensoever. It means everything. Everything of your life is written in a book. This book, the Hebrew word is sefer. It properly means to write something down. But listen to this. It means evidence. Why would someone need evidence? It means evidence. It's a letter of instruction. Remember this. 
It means a written order that was given. It means a request that was sent, that's written in this book. It means a written decree. But listen to this, and this kind of broke my brain for a moment until Abba just showed me. It means a certificate of divorce. It also means a deed of purchase. A certificate of divorce. And my brain started running. It makes one students. My brain started running. When was the first time that Yahweh divorced his bride? When they worshipped other, go other gods in adultery. When they had these out of covenant affairs with other gods. And Yahweh Elohim himself was the first one to divorce because of adultery. And as I read this, I saw this hand writing in a book, a certificate of divorce. Because how many times are we busy with adultery, worshipping other idols? Because I need more money. I have to be this. My children comes first above my husband. It's out of order. There's a lot of stuff, guys, that we all of a sudden <laughs> take out of God's order and put it in our order and it becomes an idol and that's called adultery. That's adultery when Abba Father looks down. This deed of purchase. When were we bought at the highest price? At Calvary. So can you see these entries? I want to see your book. I want you to see your book. Maybe it's pink. Maybe it's blue. Maybe it's like really oldish. I don't know. Maybe you have this picture of how your book looks. But I want, you, I want you to see this handwriting in. Maybe it write, wrote in in Zandri's book, 21 January, deed of purchase. Zandri gave her life to me today. New entry. Certificate of divorce. Zandri left my presence and protected protection today as she committed adultery with other gods today. Because the opinions of men just became a lot more important to her than my voice. And she turned away from my voice and went after me. It's written in the book. Can you see those entries, child of God? Can you quickly imagine how your book looks? How does your book look? How does the entry in your book look? So this testimony I want to share with you is about a pastor. So guys, this is not a story made up. It's something that legitly happened. Um, this pastor was in an accident. I believe he fell from a tree or something to that extent, and he fell, and he hit the ground, and he actually died. Okay, this is part of his testimony. And he testifies that he had this near-death experience and that he saw heaven and was with our Father. Who would come back? And in heaven, the first thing that he saw, and he was so super excited about it, was this book. And when he saw, when he said, when he saw this book, this book was incredibly thick. And it had loads and loads and loads of pages in. So many pages. And the pastor, as he testifies, says he got so excited. And the first thing he immediately did was ask Abba Father, Lord, is this my book? Is this the book that all that I have done for you, Abba Father God? Is this my book? Very excitedly. He said, oh, this is my book. Look at all these pages. This is what I've done. And then Yahweh answered him. And child of God, what Yahweh answered him shook me. And if you didn't hear anything today, just hear this today. Please, 
Just hear this today. So the Lord answered him and says, yes, this is your book. But this is not all that you have done for me. And the Lord held up these two pages. He held up these two pages. And he says, this is what you've done for me and for my kingdom. Iso. This book, and he pointed to the really thick book with the loads of pages. This book, this is your book. Of all the things you could have done, or you should have done, but you just never did. And as I say that, I just go all numb. Because the first thing that this pastor did, and it's, it's, it's a human thing, hashtag Garden of Eden, was, he was defending himself with our Father. And he said, but Lord, how can that be? I de dedicated my whole life to you, our Father God. I served in your kingdom, Lord. I was, was full-time in ministry. I, I, I don't understand the two pages. This can't be. And Yahweh answered him and said, yes, I know. I know you're full-time. Yes, it's written front and back. Here's your two pages. It's all written down, but you see, my son. And this is what this guy testifies. He said, the Lord said, you ignored the call to purpose for so long. Sometimes my spirit would prompt you to do things that you just never did. My spirit prompted you, but you just ignored it. Child of God and me and you sitting here today. I'm not going to lie, that hit me really hard. How many times we go, oh, I feel I need to pray for this person, man. Yeah, I'm not stupid. I can't even hear it. How many times have you felt someone on your heart that you need to call? And you don't. And then maybe two weeks later, you hear that they committed suicide. What are we waiting for? Remember that Hebrew word for book, which all is written in? Remember? It has a root word. Safar. Remember we said all, a certificate of divorce, a deed of purchase. Remember what we said? The root for safar means properly to score with a mark or tally. So it can be a record. Intensively to recount. Intensively to recount all that you've done. To be accountable for that which you've done. To tell out, literally, that what happened, it gets written down. That was declared from your mouth. It gets written down. That was declared for his kingdom. It gets written down. Properly, to score with a mark as a tally or record. That hit me because it made me think of, you know that we spoke about the Hebrew word in previous sermons, um, for sin means to miss the mark. <laughs> Properly to score with a mark. Get 
a whole new meaning. You missed it. Child of Yahweh. How, how does your book look? Maybe it has more pages though. Well, I didn't book him, but I was looking at it like that. I don't know. I don't know how your book looks, but God knows. You do in your heart, you know. How does the pages look? What, what is written in your book? Because you see, child of God, and that was really earnestly on my heart, that when we stand before Yahweh, him, it's too late. It's too late. I, 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 can't entry mark. I can't make another entry. I can't quickly change what is written. It, it's described. Where it's written. I can't erase it out. I can't depict it out. It, it's written. I can't write anything. Oh, but Lord, did you remember to write that down? It's done. Nick Mar is finished. What will it take of us to stand up and start serving in the kingdom of God? Child of God, I want to ask you, when you stand before the great I am, and believe me, I've met him once in my room face to face. You don't stand when he walks into a place. It's thorny where you fall on your face. What excuse will stand before the great I am? Please give me one. One excuse. One excuse that will stand before the one who created you. That Yahweh Elim would go, Oh, yo, I don't have that excuse. I think this is a very good excuse. But don't worry, I'll write you something else. What will stand? It's time for the bride of Christ to rise up and run like a felt fire. Spreading the good news of Yeshua is coming. Spreading the good news of the gospel. See, the thing is, I can stand here and you can feel Holy Spirit right now working in your heart and you can walk out of here unchanged because it remains your choice, child of God. I cannot choose for you. The choice remains yours. A decision and a step only you can take. I can't do that for you. That's something between you and other flesh. What will you do next, child of God? I hope my pages are really colorful. And I hope there's more than two. What are you doing, child of God? I can only talk about myself. How does your book look? Today is a good day for change, right? Today is a good day to turn that around. Today is a good day to start in the kingdom of God and make that a really thick book for the glory of God for the glory of Yahweh Elohim can you imagine when you stand in front of him and he smiles and he says welcome home my good and faithful servant can you imagine that can you see that and imagine you get your book and mine has all these rainbow pages I hope And it's really not just two pages. How cool would that be? How proud would he be of me? The bride of Christ. He is Yahweh to him, the great I am. Nothing is impossible for him. Why is it impossible for you if he is in you? He has given us victory on Calvary because he values us. 
Nothing is impossible and He is in you. You can read Ephesians 1 verse 1 and verse 19. It's time. It's time for the warrior bride to rise up. And it's time for the, the bride of Christ to start taking ground for His name. It's time. The question is, child of God, even if you are live streaming or sitting in church today, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because you have gifts and talents, so many gifts that God has given you that I don't have. But we need each other as a body to rise up, as an army to rise up. God didn't use one person to build the tabernacle. No, He used so many people. Elkien and say, Am, what perfect was, what so good was, what did an excellence could do. The tabernacle was built by a family, by an army. This is your cue, child of God. This is the fork where you are standing at, left or right. And only you can make that choice. Let's close our eyes. Abba. Abba, Father God, I just want to come today, Yahweh, to Him. As a leader of this church, Yahweh, and I just want to come and repent, Abba, Father God, and I want to say, I'm sorry, Abba, if your spirit has prompted me and I didn't do it, Yahweh, Elohim, forgive me. I want to ask you to give me another chance, Abba, Father God, that we will stand up for your name, Yahweh, Elohim. Daddy God, please, Abba, Father God, Abba, Father God, each person sitting here today, Abba, Father God, I want to ask you to come and speak into their hearts in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, Father God, that you will just call them to purpose today in the mighty name of Yeshua. Abba, Father God, you showed me there's a lot of people, it's, it's like you're in two minds and you don't know which way to go. Thank you, Abba, Father God, that you will show them now in the mighty name of Yeshua. I pray for revelation when it comes to their purpose and the plan for their lives because God has a purpose for you and He has a plan for you. He has not forgotten you, child of God, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, Father God, that people who feel something inside of them happen as your spirit moves right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Abba, Father God, everything that hinders us from purpose, remove it in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, Father God, that you will raise up and you gird up our loins. Abba, Father God, that we as bride of Christ will stand. We will not achar. We will not defer. We will not procrastinate. We will stand up and say, listen, Zandra, you know what? I want to be a teacher. I don't know how and I do know what, but tell me where to begin. That we would start walking this road. You know what, Zandra, I, I really just want to dance. You know what, Zandra, I'm really good with, with decorating. Abba, Father God, I call in every spirit to obedience right now in the mighty name of Yeshua that will help build the kingdom in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, Father God. Thank you, Abba, Father God, for new beginnings in this place. Thank you, Yahweh, for new roads and new ways that's ordained by you, Abba, Father God, and yet you will show us how to walk. Today is the day. Today is a good day for change, Abba, and we can never leave your presence unchanged. Change us. There where we are right now. Change us. Change us, Abba. Abba, Father God, come dwell in the grounds of our hearts and our spirits, Abba, and show us. Show us where you want us to move, Yahweh Elohim, not where we want to. Where you want us to move, Abba, Father God. We praise you, Abba. And we honor you, Yahweh Elohim. Daddy God, that I just want to praise you and say thank you, Daddy God, that you have it all figured out. I don't have to figure it out, Abba. Praise the Lord. Praise your name. Open our spiritual ears, Abba, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, that we will hear you. We love you. We love you, Abba. We adore you, King of kings, Lord of lords. I am. Thank you, Abba, Father God, for your love and for your presence. That you fearfully and wonderfully made us for a plan and a purpose that we will rise up in today. No more achar for the bride of Christ. No more achar. Thank you, Abba, Father God. Thank you, Yahweh. I 
I'm just going to give you like a minute. If you just ask our Father to show you and ask Him to remove that, what, that, what, that what makes you fearful. to a dark world, Abba Father God. Thank you, Abba Father God, that you equip us, Abba Father, and we don't need to be afraid, Yahweh. You equip us. Your spirit equips us, Abba. I know that so well. Child of God, I want to tell you, never be afraid to stand up because you think you don't know. I want to tell you that Yeshua is real and he'll equip you. I have, I am a living testimony of that. Thank you, Abba Father God. We praise you, Yahweh Elohim. Abba Father God, I just want to pray today, Abba Father God, that you will put mentors in place in CSWC, Abba Father God, to mentor these people that come to the front. Thank you, Abba Father God. I want to pray for the head of our church, for Kukaria Besta, Abba Father God. Thank you, Abba Father God, as he mentors all the leaders, Yahweh Elohim. You have equipped him so that we can be equipped to equip others. Maybe take that out to the ends of the earth. The truth of your word. Thank you, our Father God. Thank you for each leader in this place, our Father God. For each ministry in this place. It's part of Christian faith worship center. Thank you, Abba, that we can build the body of Christ. We praise you and we honor you in the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach. Thank you, Abba. Amen and amen. Amen. <laughs>